So we'll start out our overview of the Dynamics 365 project service automation component by taking a look at the dashboards. Now, um, all areas of, of Dynamics 365 have uh, dashboards associated with them. And for PSA, we have a number, um, probably the most useful being the practice management dashboard. This gives us an overview of uh, the key information and metrics relating to our professional service organization as a whole. So for example, we can see at the top of the dashboard there, our monthly costs that have been incurred in the delivery of our projects across the organization. We can see then the revenue that's been generated month by month across our projects. And then in the center of the screen, we can see the margin, the profit that's been uh, made across all of those projects on a monthly basis again. And at the bottom of the dashboard, we can see an overview of key utilization figures, including the total hours that have been utilized across all of our projects month by month. And also then on a per role basis, the utilization for each of our project roles versus the target utilization, which we can see is sat there at about 75% for each of the roles. Now let's move on from the project management dashboards and have a look at some of the other areas of functionality that the project service automation tool gives us. Now, like other areas of Dynamics 365, these are organized into uh, logical functional areas. And over on the left hand side, we've got the my work area, which focuses on obviously the dashboards that we've seen, but also understanding as a user the bookings that uh, you've been scheduled onto and also giving you the ability to log time and expenses and as a project manager to approve those timesheets and expenses that have been logged. We can then have access to customers and contacts who obviously will be delivering projects to and also to the sales leads and opportunities that as a project manager you may be um, being involved in producing project plans and quotes to assist with the sales cycle. We can then see the core of the uh, project management functionality, which is the, ab the ability to track uh, projects, to produce project plans and to monitor the delivery of those projects. And then we see the uh, invoicing functionality and the billing functionality, which allows us to track the billable time that's been spent on projects and obviously invoice that for that accordingly. Finally, then we've got the resourcing area, which allows us to monitor the resources that have been assigned to our projects and also to schedule them and uh, organize those resources as appropriate. So core to being able to track and manage our projects will be the project record. So let's take a look at one of those now. And we can see here a list of all of the projects that are currently active within the organization and some key information about that, those. So the name of the project, the current stage that this project is at. So are we, is that a brand new project? Are we producing a quote? Are we planning the project or actively delivering this? The customer we're delivering this project for, and then some key information on estimated start and end dates, actuals, budget, and actual time and money spent on delivering this project. We can also view the customizable charts associated with our projects. For example, we can see our uh, estimated versus actual cost of each of these projects and a range of other charts, including uh, the stage of uh, our projects broken down into a bar chart. Again, all customizable as with other areas of Dynamics 365. Now let's look at one of these projects in some detail. So we have a project here and at the top of the screen, as with other areas of uh, Dynamics 365, we can see the business process flow functionality. Now for a project, this gives us an overview of the current stage of the project. So are we dealing with a brand new project? Are we in the process of quoting, planning the project, delivering it, or is it completed and closed off? And again, at each of those stages, we can catch some key information and activities relevant to that stage of the project. We also have in the summary section there some high level information, the name of the project, the customer we're delivering this for, the project manager, and also if relevant, the template project 
that this has been uh, based on. And over on the right hand side of the screen there, we've got estimates of start and end date, expected hours to complete the project and cost of completion, and then actuals, so actual start date, actual hours spent so far, and actual costs incurred. We also have the sales area where we can see any contracts associated with this project and the contracts hold details such as the billing method. So is this going to be a time and materials or fixed price project and also the price list associated with this project. So the cost price and also the charge on price for each of our resources. Then finally, we have the status section and it's here that we can see at high level our progress in terms of um, effort spent and, and uh, activities completed on the project, the consumption of our budget or cost consumption across the project, and also an overall project status. So uh, a red, amber, green uh, status that we can flag. So the next area that we'll take a look at is the work breakdown structure. This is where we can start to plan the activities that are needed to complete our project and also start assigning roles and individuals to complete those activities. So here we are in the work breakdown structure for our project. And it's here that we can see uh, a very familiar Gantt chart, very familiar to anyone who's uh, been involved with using project planning tools before. On the left hand side of the screen, we have a list of all of the activities in our work breakdown structure. Each of them has its own uh, unique identifier and we can organize those in a hierarchical structure in terms of the project and individual phases then within that project. For each of those activities, we can track information such as the name of the activity, any predecessors or dependencies, the amount of effort and the start and end date for those activities. We can also assign a role to carry out that activity. So do we need a project manager or a functional consultant, technical, technical consultant or another type of role? And again, we can see how each of those activities are related and uh, the time that they span within the Gantt chart itself. Once we've created our project work breakdown structure and assigned roles to each of the activity, we can get a CRM to generate a project team for us. And we can use the generate project team button at the top of the screen. And this will review all of the activities in the work breakdown structure, and it will determine the type and number of roles you need to fulfill the activities on this project. And we can see that CRM has determined that we need the following project team to resource our project plan. Now, as an alternative to using the Dynamic CRM work breakdown structure tool to uh, build and plan your project. You can, if you're more familiar, use Microsoft Project. And nice and simple to do that. From within the Microsoft Project tool, we can deploy the Dynamics Connector for project. And there at the top of the screen, you can see we have the option to read in a project plan or a project template from the Dynamics PSA tool. So if we now choose our project from the list, that will be loaded into Microsoft Project. Optionally, we could choose to link the project plan to PSA, which will mean that we can no longer make any changes within the PSA tool itself, and all of our changes will be made through Microsoft Project and automatically synchronized up to uh, Dynamics PSA. We won't choose to do that in this case, though. And now, having loaded the project plan from PSA, we can make any changes that we normally would do in uh, Microsoft Project right here and then synchronize them back to uh, the PSA tool. Now, this is a great option if you've got existing project managers or people who are familiar with Microsoft Project and would prefer to use that rather than a brand new work breakdown structure tool. So now we've completed our initial project plan and we've 
assigned a role to each of our activities and also we've allowed CRM to generate our project team, we can start to make resource bookings for individuals who are going to carry out these activities and complete our project. And you'll see because we let CRM choose our project team or build our project team, when we go to the project team view here, we've got a set of generic resources, one for each of the resources that we need to complete our, activity, uh, our activities for our project. And we can see each of them has a role associated as well as the dates between which we, uh, we need this person on our project. And if we select one of these resources, we can then choose the option to book an individual. And in this case, we'll use the hard book option to choose someone who's available to carry out this uh, project activity and book them onto our project directly. Now, when we click the hard book uh, button, we open up the resource booking view and at the top of the screen there we can see the days on which we need an individual to carry out the project activity. We can see the number of hours within that particular period so at the moment we're viewing by month and down the bottom of the screen there we can see all of the individual resources who meet our requirements. Over on the left hand side of the screen, you'll see the uh, filter criteria that we're using to select these resources. And from the list of matches, we can then choose the most appropriate person. Now, if we hover over a resource, we'll see a list of their skills and the roles that they uh, are capable of carrying out. And within the planner itself, we can see any bookings that they already have. Now, where we have a grayed out booking, they have availability, but not enough to meet the requirements of our project booking. And if we select one of our resources here and expand the uh, row, we can see the specific projects that they're booked on. Now, in this case, we've got availability of Bernadette. So we'll select her as a resource, then click on the book button. CRM will complete that booking and then we'll get a notification. We're then taken back to our project team members view. And we can see that now instead of a generic resource listed against our functional consultant requirement, we can see we've got Bernadette booked for the full required hours. And for the rest of the resources in our project team, we can either continue making a hard booking for each of those requirements and booking a specific person, or we can use the submit request button to submit a resourcing request to our central resourcing team, who will then find the appropriate person and make the booking on our behalf. Now to see the bookings that have been made across all of our projects, we have the schedule board in the Dynamics PSA tool. And it's here that we can see across all of the resources within our organisation what bookings have been made for them on a day by day basis. We can see what white space we have across the team, who is overutilised, who is underutilised and what we need to do to make the best use of our resources. And to see which projects a resource is booked on, we can expand their row and we can see the specific projects and the duration for which this person's booked. Now, as a person who's going to be carrying out work on this project, I obviously want to know what bookings uh, have been made for me. And there are two ways that I can do this using PSA. I can either view them within my Outlook calendar where they'll be synchronized automatically, or I can use the bookings and tasks view. And in here, I can see details of all of the project activities that I'm booked on, the days in which I'm booked, and the amount of time on each of those days that I should be working on this project. And having carried out the work for which I've been booked, at the end of the week, for example, I'll need to submit a timesheet. Nice and simple for me to do that within CRM. I have the time entries uh, option here. 
and I get a week planner and I just click on the plus button at the bottom of the uh, appropriate day and I can then enter the details of the, work, of the work I've carried out that day, including whether this is work, holiday or time off, the project and the task I've been working on and the role that I've been carrying out on that project. Now, having filled in one of my days for the week, if, for example, I've been carrying out the same activity across the whole week, simple way of filling that in is to use the grid view. We can see I already have my Monday's activity in. And if I just duplicate that, duplicate that for the appropriate number of hours for each of the remaining days, I can quickly fill in my timesheet for the whole week. Once I'm happy with that, I can submit it. Quick review, and then that will be sent over for approval by my project manager. And as a project manager, I can view across all of the projects I'm responsible for, the timesheets and expenses that have been submitted. And I can do that through the project approvals section. And here I can see a list of the time entries that have just been submitted, one for each day of the, uh, of the week there. And I can view the amount of hours that were completed each day, whether or not each activity was billable, and the number of hours of that time that were billable. I can make changes to uh, the submitted timesheets or I can either reject them if there is a problem, or I can approve them. And I can do that individually or as a bulk job. Having approved the time entries, I can then view for my project all of the time that's been submitted alongside any uh, expenses that have also been approved. And I can see the cost that we've incurred in delivering those uh, project activities and also the revenue that we've generated in charging for those activities. And we can see that through the actuals view on our project. So, for example, here we can see entries for the costs and sales revenue for each of the timesheet entries that were submitted for this current week. And it's this information that we can then consolidate into invoices to bill the customer, either on a time and materials basis, for example, at the end of each week, or based on a predefined payment milestone plan, agreed with the customer and captured within the project contract. And we can also view the progress through our project using the project tracking view. This gives us a very similar view to the work breakdown structure, only as well as being able to see the individual project activities and the Gantt chart, we can also view the consolidated time that's been submitted and approved through the timesheet functionality and how that impacts the progress throughout our project. For example, we can see here an activity that we submitted time against. 10 hours estimated effort. We've actually spent 32 hours so far on this uh, activity. That has an impact on our project plan, which is visible there to our project manager. And if there is any time remaining, we can also track that to give us a final estimate of effort at completion of this activity. And this is all vital information to allow the project manager to view in real time the progress of their project and to react and replan accordingly. So I hope this has been a useful and informative look at the Dynamics 365 PSA tool. And for more information, please don't hesitate to get in contact with us at Tiski.